it's six o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. This is the Monday, October 16th, 2023 meeting. Series Planning Commission, would you all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, please note that Commissioner Del Nero and Commissioner Johnson are excused this evening. So we have Commissioner Jamu. Present. Commissioner Otero. Present. And Chairperson Katchel. Here. Do any of our commissioners have conflict of interest on anything on the agenda? Oh, okay. Please note that uh, public comments tonight via, via Zoom have been suspended. If you followed the media, you know why. Public comment during the meeting must be made in person. Members of the public may still view the meeting via Zoom, however. Next on the agenda is citizens communication. This is for items which are not included on the regular agenda. While the planning commission welcomes and encourages participation in planning commission meetings, adopted rules allow mo no more than five minutes for expression of non-agenda items. Matters under the jurisdiction of the planning commission and not on the post agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the commission from taking action on any matter which is not on the published agenda. It's less determined to be an emergency by the commission. Citizens are entitled to address the planning commission on any agenda item subject to the five minute provision as well. Anyone want to make any comments uh, via citizen communication, come to the podium, please. None? Okay. Since we don't have everybody on Zoom, I guess we're good. Any any written correspondence? No, we have not. Okay, thank you. Next on the item, next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. There are two items listed on our agenda. However, because we only have three of us here, uh, we're unable to act on item two, which is the approval of minutes for October second. So we won't be voting on that. Um, I guess do we need to vote to continue that to the next meeting, or is that? Yes, we will need to include that in the motion. Okay, could we get a motion to continue item, consent item two to the next meeting? Yeah, I motion uh, to move that to the next meeting. Second. Um, Commissioner Jamu? Aye. Commissioner Otero? And Chairperson Katchel? Aye. Motion passes 3 0 with two absent. And I need also need a motion to approve the item one on the consent calendar. Yeah, now could we now get a motion to approve the clerk's? Report of posting for the meeting for tonight. A motion to approve the clerk's report of posting. I second. Motion second. Commissioner Otero? Aye. Commissioner Jamu? Aye. And Chairperson Katchel? Aye. Motion passes 3 0 with two absent. Thank you. Next are public hearings. We have two of them scheduled for tonight's hearing. The first public hearing is item three on our agenda. It's vesting tentative parcel map. 23-14. This is a proposal to subdivide an existing 35,716 square foot parcel into three parcels. Proposed parcel one, 14,776 square feet and containing existing house. Proposed parcel two being 10,470 square feet and a proposed parcel three being 10,470 square feet. Golden Valley Engineering and Survey serving are the applicants. CEQA status is exempt. And this requires an action by the commission. So could we have a staff report on this, please? Yes, uh, Teddy will provide the staff report. Thank you. This presentation is for the motion. Project consists of providing a five seven one six square feet into three parcels. Parcel one contains the project site is located on road and aerial vicinity.
project site is zoned. Project site has a zone. Grounding land. Bella, which is proposed. Parcel two and parcel three will have high school. This subdivision will allow the for single family. Subdivision. With this subdivision, parcel will be able to have a main. Add um, five more years. Very needed. Project site photo. You can see the family house. It'll stay there. Um, parcels that are proposed. Staff recommends approval for two three dash one four vexing tentative parcel map. And to adopt PC resolu resolution 23-20. This concludes staff's presentation. Thanks. Any questions? The zoning is not being changed. Zoning is the same. The zoning is going to remain the same. With that, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter, please come forward, give us your name, and tell us what you have to say. No one? Okay. I guess then we'll close the public hearing since we don't have to have anybody on Zoom or can it? And bring it back to the commission for action, discussion and or action. Could you, excuse me, could you come forward please? the annexation of that 535 acres no okay we that's the next item okay just wanted to make sure yeah okay thank you sure yeah I have nothing either yes we get a motion motion um to approve pc 20 I'll second that. Motion second, please have the roll. Yes, Commissioner Damu. Aye. Commissioner Otero. Aye. And Chairperson Catchell. Aye. He passes 3 0 with two absent. Okay, now we move on to the second public hearing, and this is a project called Copper Trail Specific Plan and Annexation. This is a scoping meeting. Um, the environmental review on the project. This is not for approval or denial of the project at this point in time. It's just to gather information uh, that goes into the study of the process. And we have staff report, please. Hi, thank you. This uh, project we've been working on for a while now. The notice of preparation uh, went out on September 27th, I believe. It's a 30 day public comment period. And Excited to see some members of the public here. Um, hopefully we'll get some comments about the project. Um, we have our consultant team from Wood Rogers, Vance Jones, and Tim Chamberlain that will provide a presentation. Uh, so I'll switch to that. Thank you. Good evening, Chair and members of the commission. My name is Vance Jones. I'm with Wood Rogers, and I'm joined here by Tim Chamberlain, who will speak in a moment. Um, the, we're the primary consultants that are uh, working for the city uh, to help process the Copper Trail specific plan and the associated annexation of the southern part of the city. Uh, if you could jump to uh, the next slide, please, Christopher. What we wanted to go through this evening on our agenda is really just provide a project, a real high level project overview of what the annexation is. Copper Trails plan area. And we want to get into 
aspects of the environmental impact report, what is an EIR, what does the process look like? Hopefully, Tim will help facilitate comments from the public to bring matters forward that should be included in the EIR analysis. And then we'll wrap up with some next steps, uh, just kind of how the process looks as we. Uh, we already did our introductions. So, first, so what's on the screen right now is the city's general plan land use map. And I think that's good context, is it helps illustrate where the proposed annexation area is located in the city. So, uh, this, this land use map, uh, although it is difficult to see where the existing city boundaries are, what's demonstrated here is that the city has done a lot of planning respect to what types of land uses currently exist within the city's existing limits and, and what the plan uses would be just outside the city's limits uh, in the city's sphere of influence and general plan. When the city adopted its current general plan back in 2018, there was an expansion to the city's sphere of influence and planning area, which began to recognize and acknowledge where future growth areas in the city could be accommodated. And so at the bottom of the screen here, you can see we identified what we're calling the project site. And that is the area that is in proper trails, which is about 535 acres. In addition to that, there's another 146 acres that aren't necessarily part of the specific plan effort, but they are part of a larger annexation area that would be part of the city. Uh, the city goes through. So what I really wanted to show here is that project site, if you if you look at it through the screening, you can see there's some preliminary land uses that have already been assigned. And so when the general plan was updated back in 2018, the city had some foresight recognizing that there were existing schools in the plan. Then there was some recognition that along the highway number four would be suitable for some regional commercial land uses. And then throughout the balance of the area, just a mixture of residential neighborhoods and parks as well. So uh, I think that's important context because the city in previous years has laid the ground these copper trails today. You'd advance to the next slide, please. Right here, just wanted to give a real brief overview of the actual copper trail site itself. Uh, that's in the center of the screen with a dashed arrow. The existing site right now is bordered by Highway 99 in the edge, northern edge of the Copper Trails plan area consists of Service Road. The western edge of the plan area is Laker Road. Southern edge that you see there that kind of relates around is one of the canals on the southern edge. And this is about uh, 535 acres. Uh, will it be easier to see in the next slide what the existing schools are? But there's about 75 acres of existing schools built. The, the go back to the aerial. The balance of the plan area is primary large ranchettes, uh, some homesteads, uh, orchard uses, other agricultural uses. But important to note is that there is a fairly robust, although not improved, but a fairly robust existing roadway now to serve the annexation. So uh, Central Avenue runs north south through the plan area, Moffett Road uh, runs north south. Redwood Road, West Roadway towards the southern end, all provide access to the existing parcels. Now we can jump to the next slide. Thank you. This is the proposed land use map that we have to evaluate and prepare a specific plan. So along the, the western edge, excuse me, the eastern edge of the plan area where you see all the red, uh, that is that land use is for a regional over 100 acres situated along the edge of Highway 99 and Service Road. And, and what, what's important to point out as well, while I didn't just mention this on the previous slide, is at Service Road, there is in the works a new So that will, you know, to future in a future state when this area that'll provide significantly greater access opportunities. And in response to that planned uh, the applicant has actually 
outed some local roadway there. Traffic. So adjacent to the, the regional commercial uses that you see in red are the plan area's highest intensity residential uses. There's about, um, cheat sheet here, but there's a mixture of high density residential, medium high density residential uses. And the, the yellow uses that you see further west are low density residential and really consist of conventional. And what you see in the green there are uh, parks that have been provided throughout the plan development. Those parks are spaced throughout the, the neighborhood, so they're an easy walking distance to future residential development, and also easy walking distance to so this land use plan will ultimately be a specific plan, which is something that we're tasked to prepare. And the specific plan really functions as a blueprint and document that the city can use, assuming it's approved, the city can use to implement establishes where land uses are located, as you see here, the parks that are required by city standards, the location and sizing and alignment of and trails. The specific plan also includes provisions for public services like police, fire, parks, library, you know, all the public services that the city and the county. And it, it really is the implementation that this area to the public. When all is said and done, if, if the plan area were to build out consistent with this land use plan, it supports about a thousand, just shy of 2,400. That is a mixture of low density, medium density, and single family units, as well as higher density apartments, townhomes. Which covers just an overview. Annexation area, again, doesn't have any specific plan level of, of preparation for it, but just to keep, to make sure that there are no pockets created of county lands within the city. The annexation area is slightly bigger. Vance, could I interrupt? Um, is that microphone detachable from the stand? And if so, could you could you hold it right up to your mouth as you talk? Thank yeah. you. All right. Sorry. Wow, I didn't realize that. Uh, <laughs> Advanced in stereo. Uh, that for for my part, that uh, that wraps up the project overview. I, I do want to pass it on to Tim Chamberlain here to talk about the EIR process and uh, go through what, what that process looks like in the city and what the next steps are. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. I'm Tim Chamberlain with Wood Rogers. Um, I'm a senior environmental planner, and uh, I'd like to give you a little bit better understanding of what this project will be doing in terms of environmental documentation and the process that we're going to go through with an environmental impact. Next slide, Chris. Uh, next one after that. So just a little bit of background understanding. An environmental impact report is the highest level of CEQA document um, that's available. Uh, it's, uh, it's also abbreviated EIR, which I think a lot of people hear about or colloquially. And the purpose of the document is to provide the general public and decision makers a uh, complete understanding of the potential for environmental impacts uh, as a result of a proposed project. In this case, the project itself is the specific plan, not individual developments that would occur in the future, but more a broad uh, look at changing land uses and coming up with a plan for development to follow in the blueprint as mentioned a minute ago. So the legal requirement for this document is, of course, state law, and uh, it must be the CEQA document must be certified prior to approval of the specific. Next slide, please. So the EIR process, we are uh, very close to the beginning. We have completed a notice of preparation, um, which indicates that the city intends to prepare an environmental document for this project. And we are here today at a scoping meeting for the notice of preparation. Um, and we're soliciting comments from uh, 
uh, responsible agencies, other stakeholders, and the general public uh, in regards to the proposed project. Um, moving forward in, in terms of the next steps, it'll include preparation of the draft environmental impact report. There will be a public review period associated with the document once it's been completed. Um, where members of the public and other stakeholders will have an additional opportunity to provide comments. Um, those comments will be reviewed by the city and uh, responses will be provided uh, and included in the final environmental impact report, which the city will then make a determination to approve or not to approve. And another important part of the EIR is to provide a reasonable range of alternatives. So this scoping meeting purpose is to provide an opportunity for comments um, with a focus on providing the city with additional information that can be utilized to create a more complete environmental analysis of the proposed project. Um, we are soliciting uh, comments, um, both from the members of the public, uh, as well as, as I mentioned, responsible agencies. This includes state agencies, other local agencies, uh, which could be affected by the project. And um, all of that information will become part of the environmental record and included in the environmental impact. So scoping comments can be submitted either in writing uh, via mail um, to the city, uh, to the attention of Christopher Holm, or uh, via email or they can be provided at this scoping meeting verbally, um, of which a summary will be provided in the uh, environmental record. And we do encourage, um, we encourage that comments, if possible, focus on uh, environmental information that is relevant to the environmental document. So what types of environmental issues are covered under the environmental document? Um, it's, it's a wide range of topics that are included in the CEQA guidelines, um, including impacts to uh, community, aesthetics, biological resources, air quality, noise. Um, the complete list is here on the screen. Um, but essentially, it looks to cover all of the potential environmental impacts to the natural habitat and to the community at large. Next slide. So next steps will be uh, completing the notice of preparation, uh, public review period, compiling those comments and using the information collected to prepare the environment, the draft environmental impact report, and then continuing along the process um, to bring that ultimately to the city council. For slide. Uh, and so with that, we are uh, completing our presentation, um, and of course, we're available to help with the questions that the commission may have. Question. I don't have anything right now. I guess we have the public hearing going on this evening. So anybody that wants to speak on this environmental impact preparation, please come forward and state your name and tell us what you feel needs to be covered. My name is Robert Conway. Anyway, I'm a, a farm some of this ground that's in this area right here right now. My concern is that you guys keep pushing out and pushing out and pushing out and it's affecting how we operate out there too because of certain situations, uh, chemicals that we use, uh, things that are just affecting the environment out there. Um, I understand growth, but there's a certain point to where enough is enough to be honest with you. Um, they put the schools out there and part of me uh, does have a little bit invested in this. I've been out there on that edge since I've been 13 years old. And uh, um, I was not happy when they put the school out there. And honestly, my first pot thought at that time was, yeah, here comes a development. And sure enough, a little bit later, Stuart Farmy uh, buys his property with eventually to 
develop it, which is what he's pushing now. I don't understand at times how you guys operate with the annexation stuff. I just know over times that we have seen people just come in and say, okay, we're going to build here. It's a different process. And like I said, I, I don't understand you know, understand this more, but you guys with the planning commissions keep creeping out and out and out. Right now, people can't afford homes. I don't understand why we're putting homes out there when we're taking away farm ground that is actually helping with everything else here, the farmers and stuff like this. Environmental impact, yes. The other thing I'm concerned about too is that I do farm right there by the high school right now. I put black eyes in the, my uh, field there before, and three years ago, before we hit the drought, yeast from the farm, uh, sewer farm next door, or water treatment plant, whatever, they came over and cleaned it out. Let me just cleaned it out. My concern with this is you got the school there, and I took this to the regular board of directors and stuff here a while back, talking about the property. These geese, crap all over the place, to be honest with you. I'm just being blunt. And uh, uh, you're putting these homes on there. These people are going to be walking through there, and these geese, gonna, they're not going to stop like we do and say, hey, I need to use the bathroom. They're just going to go. So this has been one of our bigger concerns there already, even without just thinking about putting homes and stuff in there. They are uh, trying to use. Um, they are given the right to stay there. There's no way to uh, remove them anyway, unless the board of directors tries to. One of them on there did say that they agreed with me to a certain extent that it needs to be worked on. Like I said, my concern is with the environmental part of it, on that end of it, there, and then the effect it's going to have on our out there. I was coming in here with a different mindset but about this, whether it's going to be looking to prove night, whether they're going to put it, annex it or not. Of course, on that, being that it's an environmental. So my concern is that how is it going to affect us out there in the ag area? Traffic there is already a nightmare with the four schools that are there. Idol, the other one I can't remember, it's out on the old Kersey Ranch. They put Central Valley High School in there. I think there's a charter school down there. All these schools right there, you go there between eight and nine o'clock in the morning and they're even 7.30, you can't get through at all. The lake clears up. And they are parking all over the places on the side of the roads to drop these kids off. I darn near hit one a while back because he just decided all of a sudden to dart in front of me with my equipment. Oh, this is my concern with that. You guys keep impacting and pushing out there and pushing out, out there. Why not take and find these spots that are in the city limits already that are still vacant and develop those first before you start to move out further? I said, I do understand growth, but I think the wrong time to be doing anything out there, period. Annexing or uh, anything. Can I ask where your property is located? It's actually the piece, it's just right there on the west side of the uh, high school. It's a little okay. eight acre place and there's another little three acre one that belongs to, uh, Ed, well, I don't know if it's under Edmund Seamus and the other one belongs to a Jack Bird. So you're within the project area then? Oh yeah. Okay. Right there in the corner, uh, basically a Blaker and uh, Blaker and Service Road. Let me ask a question. Go back a few years. Did you get involved at all in the general plan update process in uh, 2018? I believe it was. Never knew anything about it. To okay. be honest with you. All right. Because you know, there's yeah. My history goes back to, well, like I said, it's 13 years old. I know, and I know, um, I know Stuart Fami. I actually leased ground from him for a while. That was originally bought. Gosh, I'm going to guess 20 years ago, somewhere in there. I can't give you exact dates. To develop, and that was the time that the market crashed. So they weren't able to develop. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. This is you know, part of me is just like one thing I want to say is that I think developers that do this projects and stuff like this need to be local, not coming from the Bay Area. So that's another part of just okay. things going on. But anyway, I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Can I ask a question? Uh, I would guess I was under the impression that every all the property within the plan area called Copper Trails was part of the process. But this is a guy who owns land within it and is not. Oh, okay. Okay, Th that was my question. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else want to get up and speak? Please come forward. Good evening. My name is Ford. Um, I own a parcel directly across the street from Central Valley High School. <clears throat> Excuse me, Central, Central Valley High School. We've had that parcel since December of 2005. It was our attention at that time to buy and get it annexed into the city. So I've been waiting for this project for quite a bit now. The city does need growth. The city does need housing. Um, we have taken an anti-growth uh, approach for the last God knows how many years. Um, cities like Manteca is way ahead of the curve. Uh, Modesto is not trying to catch up. City uh, series is lagging. Uh, at that time, this project had legs and had the footings. But the city manager at that time put on so many constraints that basically yanked the project out and it was forcing this annexation at the cost of Walmart, Super Walmart at that time. And from there, the project died. As you know, in 2008, the economy crashed and then this project got uh, put on. And so I would like to see this project put forward. I think it's a great project. I've been living in the city since 1987 uh, and I'm highly invested in the city uh, and the local contractor as well. So I am invested in this project. I think the city needs it. And I think we all need it. So that is my two cents. Uh, any questions for me? Do you have any comments on the environmental process? That's what we're here for tonight. We're not here okay. tonight. You know what? You're, I didn't you're ahead of the curve a little bit. Okay. So, so sorry about that. I came late to the party, so I didn't get a chance to review okay. uh, too much. Um, but uh, I'm sure there'll be uh, future planning meetings that I'll go ahead and look at the impact and be able to comment on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Hi there. Hi. I own the property right directly across the street from Heidel. Um, as far as environmental, um, when they do the schools, that'll go through fairly easy. But I'm hoping, I know you're only supposed to talk about, but what I've, I've been living here in Sirius for 30 years and it's been a great place. And where we live is prime to for access to the freeway. But, um, and what I'm wondering is how long in your guesstimation, will these projects take before we're annexed? The project schedule is about a year and a half. Um, okay. Annexation would take maybe another six months or so. Okay. Um, before the proper, any properties are developed, they'd have a separate entitlement process um, that would hopefully piggyback off some of the environmental work that's going to be done here. Okay. Um, so as as far as actual development, it's two to three years um, yeah. before we see that. Okay. Thank you for that. And uh, what I'm hoping is for series in general, um, what I've seen a lack of, Herlock developed that whole area that used to be the farmer area that right, you know, milk cows, and all of a sudden they were gone because they bought the, and then all of a sudden these roads came out of nowhere that looked like nothing. But by building the infrastructure first, all the commerce came and the homes, and it's easy to maneuver. And I feel like Sirius does that backwards. I'm hoping this time, put the infrastructure in first, spend the money. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to get that kind of stuff going, 
but spend the money to do it and it'll come back to you 10 times. I know we're going to be bought out, which is fine. I've, I've enjoyed my time where I am, but I'm hoping for series because I really do love the town. I know we need more homes. Um, I'd like to see us being more medium density because we're directly across the street from the school, but duplex is there so people can actually afford a half a house. You know, that's their own house because people can't afford a home that's four or five hundred dollars that are, are you know, uh, in the lower end of income and they'd like to own a home. So I'm hoping you consider these kind of things. That's all I'm saying. But I, I, it's time and um, I am for the, the project. And thanks for letting me know the timeline. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Yes, sir. John Warren, City of Sirius, lived here 38 years. And what the previous uh, lady spoke about with the uh, infrastructure is entirely correct. Take a look at Ochoa Park out there. They built out Eastgate, and the park is still lacking. Lion Park over here never has been built. That's uh, between the The environmental impact report needs to address infrastructure and how it's going to impact the city. Fire protection, police protection. You're going to put 3,000 new residents down there. And you have to pay for those things services that the city is going to provide. How is that going to be put in place going forward? Okay. How many police officers will this city have to hire? How will they pay for them? Right now, the city doesn't have a balanced budget. It's going to have a hard time paying for the people they have in place. The same thing for fire protection. All that area out there is going to be added to what Sirius currently has. And that's going to have to be paid for going forward. So what process is going to be put in place to provide those funding projects for the city? Before you build any roads down there, I'd have you build every park that's in those green shaded areas. So they're in place before you start building houses around them and putting families and children in there that are going to want those services. Their kids will grow up without a park. That's the way the city does things now. The other bad thing that this project is going to develop or cause is the 146 acres there off of Central Avenue that would become county pocket areas. And they don't want that to take place. And I don't know how many people have driven through that area recently and looked at the state of the utilities and the streets and the sidewalks of those communities. I don't know personally, but I don't think a lot of those folks in there are even hooked up to our city sewer systems, whether they are or where they aren't. The streets are dilapidated. The parking situation in there is terrible. All that infrastructure needs to be brought up to date before the city should annex that 146 acres. And how are we going to provide services for those people that live there? fire protection, police protection, libraries, parks, all of that stuff needs to be borne by the Copper Trails project because they're causing that. Copper Trails comes into effect. That's 146 acres there will be county pockets. We don't want those. So who's going to pay for that? If you want one thing, you're going to have to pay for the whole thing. And it all needs to be addressed in the environmental impact report. That's very important. Otherwise, the city of Sirius can't afford to do that. You can't go to the bank and get money out that's not in there. So consider those things and make sure those things get noted in that impact report. That's very important. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, I guess we're done then. Seeing that, we'll close the public hearing. Discussion. What little property owners are there? Uh, Copper Trails. Uh, 
I don't have that figure off the top of my head, but um, in the in the Copper Trails area, not not including the hundred uh, the, the area north of Service Road, I would guess around fifty property owners, there, some somewhere in that ballpark. Yes. So I just have a question. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about updating the service road. What is it? The diamond change. Is that going to come before anything, any of these other plans start? If this all got approved? Because I'm just concerned about the, the, all of the roadway update in that area. So we have our director of engineering here, Kevin Waugh. Is your microphone on, Kevin? Um, he might be able to speak to the timing on that interchange project. Would you repeat the question? My question was, um, this project, if it gets annexed, is that um, service road update going to be complete before we start building in this area? It's my understanding that this would probably uh, predate the completion of the uh, service road double diamond interchange. Thank you. Anything else? I have a couple questions and I guess a comment on the project. First question, will this be a, will this election require, annexation require an election? Is this an inhabited annexation under LAFCO? Um, so the, the LAFCO process, um, I, I haven't looked at it for a little while, but I do know that there's an opportunity for the property owners to protest the annexation. And if a certain number of them do, then it does go to an election process within yeah. that area. Okay. It looks like it could certainly go that direction. Um, secondly, in our... In, in just the basic description of the project, does it include the maximum build out of second units on all these single family dwelling unit parcels like we had tonight on our parcel map? Um, we're conservatively looking at around an 80% of maximum. Um, that's the figure that we came up with for um, what might reasonably be built out in the future. And it should be noted that as soon as if it is annexed, as soon as it is annexed, it wouldn't be immediately developed. There are a lot of different property owners and each one would develop kind of at their own time scale. And some people might want, might not want to develop right away. Um, so the whole process of filling out the whole area would probably take several years or many years. Yeah, I just want to make sure that had been addressed. So easy to forget about this, that recent change in the law. And then just a project design, concern I have, and this is just me, um, the area that's labeled parks looks to me more like it's landscape strips uh, along the roads, which are not parks. They are green areas planted probably in grass, which means in this time of drought, we're going to have to irrigate basically land which has no use, practical use. Uh, I would much rather see a design that has real parks in it, which could be landscaped, uh, built and as the gentleman indicated, uh, a plan to build those such that it can be usable. He pointed out, I believe, at least two parks in the city now which are un undeveloped, and uh, one of them surrounded by housing on three sides. Uh, the other is kind of on the fringe of the city, and might, it might be a little different situation to look at. But uh, you're going to be putting a whole lot of people out here, and I would like to see some usable park space, not this. Uh, landscape strip all around the project that they're counting as park space to meet their obligation under the code requirements and the ordinance requirements, uh, but really don't provide any kind of park space. Can you practice soccer there? Probably not. Uh, over here in Berry Grove Park, now they're they're practicing cricket every day. I didn't know we had cricket in series, but we do, and there's a lot of people over there doing it and having a good time doing it. Uh, so that's just an observation on the design of the project. I, I can't see approving a project with all these green strips of landscaping all the way around it, which look nice, obviously, uh, but require maintenance. Uh, my parents lived in a community on the central coast not too long ago, uh, which had that exact kind of landscaping 
And uh, this was back about four, five, six years ago. They took it all out uh, because of the drought, because it was costing money to keep this stuff up. And they put it into uh, low maintenance, low, uh, low water need um, property along the, along the streets and the land the streetscape. So uh, that's my personal observation on the plan itself. As far as the rest of it, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a great idea to include uh, the county islands and whatnot. I think see you jumped over a little bit on the other side of the freeway to pick up some potential commercial land over there. It's within the sphere of influence. So I, I think it's well thought out, uh, again, aside from the park concept, which I really don't like. Um, but other than that, and the questions I had, that's all I have for now. We'll get more chance to look at this later on, but uh, that people, that's their job is to do this stuff for us. And so that's why they're here. So I guess with that, uh, we, we don't have any action required on this, this tonight that I know of. So uh, anybody else, else have anything else they'd like to add since you're here? Did I hear right that, um, and you're right, I love you guys. Did I hear right that you're not going to widen service? You're going to have the housing and all that done first? And the overpass is not going to be done before all these homes are going to be done? Is it all right if I answer the question? Yes. My thoughts are that the uh, overpass will most likely be completed in 2028. You got to be kidding me because that, right now it's backed up all the way to the high school, the, the traffic, trying to get over that little, how, how, why, how can that get moved on quicker so they start that in? Current schedule depended upon environmental reasons. That's what's holding it up? Environmental? That, that is one of the things that is uh, currently scheduled right now. The construction drawings will be probably completed in 2025. The, uh, you know, the negotiated settlements the project so just guessing that it's around the 2027 20, i am praying for the there's no two, way to get that moving out a little quicker it, it's uh because it, really it's i don't see how this is going to work without the infrastructure the railroad uh, uh, is yes one of the, uh, they want money we have a two-hour window over the construction of the railroad tracks and they're going to give us so we're going to challenge by that yeah but i would believe that copper trails if it went with a, a you know let's say a whole year in the environmental that, uh, the drawing to be done I, I i would say that within two years that would be okay we're looking at uh, 26 so yeah, it could be a year or two years before the service road interchanges. Well, however you can light a fire under people's butts and get that going, I totally am for that because it's going to be really, this is the thing about series is you put all these little uh, stoplights and the, the, all that. And it's it's a mess right now. People don't know where to go because it's, it's a mess. So I'm just saying we have the ability to have a beautiful, town the infrastructure needs to be in there first so, so these guys can come in and have it easy to make series a wonderful place we we are pushing it uh, every day every week good you we meet with them weekly. do it absolutely thank you that's all i want to say you're welcome is caltrans the lead agency on that project is caltrans the lead agency on the no we are it was serious. Okay. Yes. I wasn't Caltrans sure. Caltrans is going to end, end up with the property, uh, Runnage Road. They'll be the owner of the property. Okay. Thank you. I think it, translating what was just said into the 
environmental document would probably be the need for a very detailed, including schedules for implementation as much as possible uh, in the mitigation monitoring reporting plan, uh, which is what, when the, when the environmental process is complete, you, let, you end up with a plan to make sure everything that you say is gonna be done is done, including mitigation of impacts. And the timing is important in a case like this, as was just pointed out. So uh, hopefully we'll see a detailed plan uh, I know market factors always come in when you're developing a project. And we had a comment earlier that uh, we're not sure how this is gonna develop depending on what one landowner wants to do versus another, but I think we need to see an implementation plan so that we can see things that make this project, will make this project work or can make this project work if it's approved is, uh, is in place. In other words, the infrastructure, when it's gonna go in, how it's gonna go in, how it's gonna be paid for. I know that part's not necessarily part of environmental document, but the, the timing and the implementation plan certainly can be and should be, uh, at least I would like to see that. So with that. Uh, I have one more thing. So I'm also thinking about the safety of the children that will be living in this new area, um, especially if that service road area is not done, the roadways aren't cleaned up. I don't know where they're gonna walk because right now it is a little dangerous. I see kids walking over service road because there's also not another junior high in this area. So I would want to know what the school district thinks about the growth of series and where are these kids going to go to school? We recently had a, it's called the two plus two plus two meeting with the school district and we brought up this project and um, they are, our close partners in working together um, on making sure that um, what's implemented makes sense for the school as well. So we'll, we'll be analyzing that as well. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we're completed with this item on our agenda. Continuing on, get back to the agenda here, pack it. Give me. Public meet, new business, we have none. Public meetings, none. Unfinished business, none. Matters initiated by planning commission and staff, nothing. Reports, commissioners have anything to report. Not going to report on your vacation for us? Okay. Okay, chairperson has nothing. City attorney, anything to report on? I guess not. City staff. I have nothing, thank you. Okay. Well, with that, we will adjourn to our next meeting, which is scheduled to be Monday, November 6th, 2023. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>